So White Women's Black Panther came out. Yes, I did steal that joke from a tweet. The Barbie movie released, much to my joy because the theatre was packed with lots of pretty blonde women wearing pink. And also us, the Lotus Eaters, went and saw it. Now, not most of the hosts. It was most of the the back team. You can see the photo on Twitter where I'm grimacing because I'm surrounded by baby pink and inflatable sharks. Uh, But everyone else had a great time. And I had a great time watching it because the film was an utter disaster but they didn't realise what they made. They have no idea that they have made the best propaganda piece for reclaiming masculine vitalism against the matriarchy ever created. So I saw it with a slightly different lens because I I went to it thinking, I'm going to watch this to see, is it something that I could show my daughters? Because I've got two daughters in the target age range. No. no. So I was looking at the first level dynamics, but actually when I saw that you were going to do a segment on it and you've come with this base narrative. Yes. There is a sort of subtext going on that actually on a second viewing, I think I could quite get into. Oh, it's accidentally. Because Ken is really kind nice. of our guy, isn't he? Ken, Ken is, as the Ryan Gosling ge- meme goes, literally me. As you may know, YouTube arbitrarily demonetized our channel. So I'd like to thank Lutzis.com's first sponsor, Atlas VPN, for supporting us and providing a service that is actually useful as we move into our new cyberpunk dystopia. Atlas VPN Premium is just $1.83 per month with three months extra and a 30-day money-back guarantee if you aren't happy with the service. Follow the link in the description to sign up. You'll be liberated from region locks so you can watch streaming content from anywhere in the world, but I think more importantly is that it masks your IP. Firstly, this prevents us from being spied upon by the various state dragnets. We find it important that it keeps your Google searches private, which prevents them from tailoring the results based on your past searches, which prevents them from hiding information because they've built up a profile against us. It also protects you from being the target of malicious ads, trackers, and malware, and informs you when someone is trying to steal your data. There has been a spate of people getting their accounts hacked recently, and Atlas VPN helps protect against that. Atlas VPN is also easy to install. Even I could do it without assistance. What you're seeing now is the footage I recorded of myself in installing the thing. Once you're logged in, you can see that you just need to click on the location that you want to tell the internet where you want to be from, and you're all set. To repeat then, Atlas VPN Premium is just $1.83 per month with a three-month extra and a 30-day money-back guarantee if you aren't happy with the service. Follow the link in the video description to sign up, and remember, supporting them is supporting us, so please do check them out. So so my, <laughs> my editor at The Critic has coined the term, because John Doyle put out a tweet saying that he was going to do a Ken video, because he already did Neo-Gastonism after Beauty and the Beast. We're saying that Beauty and the Beast, Gaston is actually the hero, of course. Because if you're in 17th century France, who do you want? It's the noble hunter who makes friends with all the men in the village, who uh, palms off the advances of harlots and actually just wants to settle down and give you a lot of sons, and kill the giant werewolf threatening the town. Oh, well, I got that the first time I watched it. Yeah, like, most people didn't. So, so, so he nicked Neo-Gastonism, because I would have right. loved to have made that interpretation, but well done, John Doyle. And then John Doyle said something about, about Ken, and I said neo Kenanism. And instead, my, my editor at The Critic said, no, neo Conservatism. That is the Kennedy we are going with today. Ken, <laughs> Ken is our guy. And I've seen lots of conservatives say that the Barbie movie is woke. It's awful. It tries to be, but don't let them get away with their propaganda. Because if they screw up and accidentally make something we can claim, we will claim it. Don't give an inch. That's so it is definitely trying very, very hard yes. to be woke. Yeah, but it's made by such incompetence they yeah. don't even know what they're talking about. Yeah, but they kind of did it accurately to the point where it actually displays all the weaknesses of woke as well. Yeah. Which I'm sure you're going to get into. Yeah. So yeah. yeah it's good. And, and no, no transphobia in this segment, Dan, because we want it to go on YouTube, even though the Barbie movie is very transphobic. Yeah, actually it is. It really, really is, actually. Yeah, we'll jump into that, don't worry. But first, speaking of uh, relationships which failed and benefited the sane man at the expense of the insane woman, if you subscribe to our website, you'll get articles like this one with a narration track from uh, John Crow. This is an article I wrote while I was away in America. Lovely. And it was on uh, Jonah Hill and why men can't marry mermaids. I saw this wonderful painting in the Harvard Art Gallery and thought, well, that's probably how Jonah Hill's feeling this week, considering his ex leaked a bunch of texts that he sent where he was perfectly reasonable and she was like, I want to post nudes on the internet. So they broke up. And the thing with mermaids is the wrong half is fish. That's exactly what I say. Right. So it, try and have a relationship with a beautiful woman that posts herself half naked on social media. It's about sterile or trying to shag a mermaid. Yeah. Anyway, let's get into the Barbie movie. Um, there was some stuff before before it released. Uh, so there was some there was some woke stuff, which is that right before the film came out in the trailer, and this was in a scene in the film, you know, where Weird Barbie pulls down the map to the real world. Right. The map on it showed a dividing line in the South China Sea. So 
it shows the nine dash line, and that's the Chinese Communist Party saying that they own part of the South China Sea that Vietnam says is just off its coast. Right. In 2014, Vietnam nearly got into an armed conflict with China because China plopped an oil rig right off of their coast. And so it's been banned in Vietnam because they're pandering to the Chinese markets to try and get the Chinese. Uh, people right. did point out that it's really funny that Oppenheimer is not banned in Japan, but this is banned in... <laughs> I also saw plenty of memes, I'm not stealing these, where they said that Bar one of Barbie's first products also launched in Japan, so did Oppenheimer's. And I was just kind of impressed that we've got some blonde white people featuring in a film that's coming out these days. Yes, yeah. But it was, it was to denigrate the Kens, and there were yeah. very diverse cast members, but the fascinating yeah. thing about the Barbie and Ken casting... Uh, one, it's totally fine to objectify men at all levels and make yeah. them just himbos. And all of the men were fit and in shape. Now, they were various degrees of, of effeminate and masculine, but that was part of the yes. parody. Whereas all of the Barbies, you were allowed to be as grotesquely obese, dysgenic, and mutilated as you liked. Um, so the Barbies were very egalitarian in Life is Plastic, but all the Kens had to be shredded chads. That's also true. Physiognomy bears out, it turns out. So speaking of woke, these are the people behind it. Uh, Greta Gerwig was the director. Yeah. Greta Gerwig did Little Women and Lady Bird. So I, I, I didn't know who directed it, but it was very clear watching it that it was directed by a childless Californian obese woman. No. So it? She, is, she is skinny. She is married to another California director, the guy that did Marriage Story, and she does oh. have two kids. Wow. Yes. Okay. She's also directing this, this new Snow White film. Have you seen Snow White's New Dwarves? By any is, is that one where Terry Crews is Snow White? Um, you're not far off, actually. Right. So these are the dwarves. Well, only one of them's a dwarf. Yes. Do you know why? Uh, uh, Peter Dinklage from Game of Thrones. You know. Yes. Yeah. He he said it's um really dwarf phobic to cast dwarves as the seven dwarves, even though he's made an entire career of multiple millions of dollars playing a dwarf. Wait, wait. He he's pulling the ladder up behind him. It's a very short ladder. <sighs> But yes, he is. <laughs> These are the dwarves. Again, audio listeners. We've just been confusing the audio listeners for this entire podcast, I'm sure. Uh, you yeah. wouldn't have understood the intro if you're an audio listener. But we have three black people, two male and one female. One dwarf who might only have one arm, judging by the photo. Uh, Jesus is in the back. And then two white men. So there's three white men, four white men if you count one of the dwarves, that's taken a job away from six dwarves. Right, not great. Uh, that's not Snow White. That's her stunt double. Right. But the real Snow White doesn't look far off. It's, okay. it's Rachel Zegler, and Rachel Zegler's a Hispanic woman. So it, it, the, the whole thing with Snow White is, is like... White? Yes. Skin yeah. as white as snow. Snow, snow not quite white. I mean, right. you, you probably yeah. shouldn't make skin complexions to dirt or anything comparisons, because that would be very racist. You shouldn't do that. Right. So we'll skip over that bit. But it is the character. But okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's been written by Greta Gerwig, um, and it will not feature Prince Charming and instead focus on a stronger Snow White who dreams of becoming a leader. And, and she says that people are making jokes about ours being the PC Snow White. It is, because it needed that. And that's, that's Rachel Ziegler, who, who gave an interview about Snow White yeah. with the woman playing the evil queen. You know the evil queen that's really jealous of Snow White's youth and looks? Yes. Would you like to see what Snow White and then the evil queen look like? Yeah, go on then. What, seriously? <laughs> yes. So, so, so Gal Gadot is playing the evil queen who's jealous of... But mid-white. She's much, much hotter. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So in this, um, Rachel Ziegler says, it's not 1937. Snow White's not going to be saved by the prince and she's not going to be dreaming about true love. She's dreaming about becoming the leader she knows she can be like her late mother. So it's all about power and domination, not gender complementarity, not wholesome family values. And that's just like Barbie. So Greta Gerwig has a, has a track record okay. here. Um, not, not going to be how she, how she plans it out. There was also more pre-release discourse. Speaking of mid, uh, are you aware of this that happened recently? So this is, this is a, an Anon account I quite enjoy following. Right. Um, I must disavow all of his takes, including this one, where he said that Margot Robbie's a hard seven. You used to find a Margot Robbie in every Blockbuster video in 1995. Well, I used to go to Blockbuster videos in 1995. and Not Margot Robbie, no. No, no, no. no. Um, this, this got... 31.8 million views on a single tweet. And it got to the point of where at the Turning Point Action Conference, uh, Florida Congressman Matt Gates got up and said, let me just be clear, Margot Robbie is not mid. A 10 is a 10, whether it's Common Core math or not. Sitting congressman is commenting on Twitter anons rating Margot Robbie's <laughs> level of attractiveness. I love where politics has gotten to. He was just a troll in the first place. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's doubled down on it. Because have you seen those memes recently? It's mainly featuring Zendaya or that, that 
Zegler yeah. woman that's playing Snow White. Yeah. But where this is who Hollywood wants us to think is a model yes. versus like random cashier and she's yeah. smoking. Those those yeah. things continue. But Margot Robbie doesn't really fit that, that category. I mean, it literally no. in the Barbie film, they say when Margot Robbie's saying, oh, I'm not pretty anymore, Helen Mirren's narration cuts in and says, Note to the directors, casting Margot Robbie in this role may not have been the person to make this point that you would hope. To be fair, Margot Robbie in um, whatever it is, the big Wolf, short was, was, Wolf of was Wall Street. Yes. Yes, you're thinking of we can't show that scene. Yes. I'm sorry. Um, it's out there. Enjoy. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, you creepy old perv. It turns out that, that Matt Gates and his wife are actually big Barbie fans. And so they went to this is a, an Aspen Ideas festival um, party thing. It wasn't actually the premiere, but they decided to dress up in a Barbie theme because it was Barbie themed because it coincided. And this is where I'm going to start complaining that the conservatives take on this. I mean, Lauren Chen, friend of the show, she did a video where it said it's woke feminist messaging. And that's definitely how they try to do it, right? Matt Gates's wife says that disappointingly low testosterone from Ken. And then Ben Shapiro did a 43-minute interview where he destroys Barbie by being a grown man that torches Barbie toys. I mean, I understand Ben's having a little bit of fun and he's playing into the character. Okay. And he's right on some of his criticisms here. But I think all of the conservative influencers that have commented on this film have missed the point. Because, yes, that's what the movie was going for. The movie was trying to denigrate men. This is the take you got, right? That it was just disparaging men endlessly. Well, that, I mean, that is the surface-level take. I mean, there was bits of it that I started to think Actually, that's really quite funny if you looked at it from a different perspective. Um, it's quite funny because the normie women that I know went to see it hated the film. They yeah. were like, I'm not going to rewatch it. it oh, make it makes sense. women look just pathetic. But the story's incoherent unless you're playing yeah. into the online discourse they're trying to satirize. But they satirize it so yeah. poorly, they actually like are pro our side, which is yeah. we don't hate men and, and, and chads rise up. Yeah, I mean, there's definitely bits of this. Like, it's like. I, I, are you going to get into the whole kind of story? Yeah, yeah, we, we may as well, we may as well break do, down. I do have some comments on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll spend quite a lot of time on that. Just, just a yeah. bit more preamble. There was a, a kind of sign that things weren't going as the filmmakers intended yeah. in an interview with Greta Gerwig for Rolling Stone. And in this, she explains that one of the scenes that you first see when Barbie and Ken enter the real world, you know when they're rollerblading along Venice Beach? Oh, yes. Barbie is beset by sexism from police officers, from construction workers, from volleyball players. They were filming that scene to say that the world of men, the patriarchy that yeah. really exists, is constantly assaulting women with sexism and compliments that have, quote, an undertone of violence from all sides. The funny thing is, when they filmed this, it didn't play out that way. So this is a quote from Greta Gerwig. When we were actually shooting on Venice Beach with Margot and Ryan in neon rollerblading outfits, it was fascinating because it was actually happening in front of us. People would go to Ryan, high five him and say, awesome, Ryan, you look great. And they wouldn't actually say anything to Margot Robbie. They just look at her. It was surreal. In that moment, she felt self-conscious. As the director, I wanted to protect her. Right, so it's sexism if Margot Robbie does and doesn't get compliments, <laughs> but everyone's walking up to Ryan Gosling going, yeah, bro, literally me. And he loves it. And he loves it. And he was yep. humble enough to interact with everyone as well. But Greta Gerwig saying, oh, Margot Robbie's not getting the compliments she deserves? Well, I have to shield her. But as Barbie, if she's getting hit on, oh, this is patriarchy. We must institute the matriarchy instantly. Yeah. These people's brains are broken with contradictions. And organically, people are playing out and, and, and conveying their Because they only have a single lens to view absolutely everything, whether it fits or not. Yeah, it's about paradigmatic female oppression. Yes, that's and what so I, yes, that's If what I, I don't get my daily need of online or in-person validation, I will cry about it. If I get the validation I don't want, it's literally sexual harassment. Yes. So this is just a sign that they made this movie with an intention and it wasn't quite what they thought. The other sign that it wasn't quite what they thought is, you know, the Oppenheimer Barbie discourse. People have been oh, doubling yeah. up some screenings. Uh, are you watching Oppenheimer by any chance? I'm sure. Know? I'm sure I will. Right. So I'm not a Chris Nolan fan. I don't really right. like any of his films. So I'm not bothering. So I'm doing the Chad move and only seeing Barbie. Okay. So is everyone in MAGA country? I'm not joking. If you look at the Google Trends by state, um, Barbie is trending in red states, whereas Oppenheimer is trending in blue states. <laughs> this is incredible. And I, I, it really is. I, I think it's because this might be the old phrase that liberals read conservative watch TV. So conservatives in yeah. red states are just going for the normie culture thing. They don't realize it's subversive. But then actually they're going and seeing it and will probably identify harder with Ryan Gosling. Whereas everyone that looks, wants to look pretentious is going to go see Oppenheimer for three hours. Yeah, I have read a book on Oppenheimer. I mean, he's an interesting fellow. Yeah. But it's a Chris Nolan film. It's apparently long and overindulgent. Though I yeah. might see it because Florence Pugh gets. I very much get the impression it's going to be one of those films that I admire more than I like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I agree. Uh, Barbie 
I liked far more than I would ever possibly admire. For yes. all the wrong reasons. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. the Barbie, Barbie was kind of fun. I will give it that. I, I I thought it was profoundly unfunny when they tried to be funny, and then yeah. it was hilarious for all the wrong reasons. So yes. So I'm just going to pull up the trailer and, and let it sit on in the background and, and play without sound because I just want to talk about the plot because right. this it's such a surreal moment because the film opens and they give this whole spiel about how Barbie has inspired a generation of women. They literally say in the in the narration, all the problems of feminism were solved by Barbie. Barbie can be anything. And all of the other Barbies other than stereotypical Barbie, who's the one that has the, well, not midlife crisis. I would, I would say approaching the wall and not being able to have children crisis. That seems to be what it's getting at. Yeah, actually that fits. Yes. Considering she's getting cellulite and she yes. goes to the gynecologist at the end of the film and she's inspired by a mother and the whole press to have the, the normal Barbie is, can we have, just have a Barbie that's just a mum? That will sell, right? And the only person that's ostracized of all the Barbies is the one Barbie that got discontinued, which was pregnant all the time. And they say it's weird, but then it comes off like, well, motherhood is denigrated in the, in the permanent youth so and career woman So 90% of this line. film is really anti-mother. Yeah. And then the last bit is that's what she picks. Exactly. Because there's a whole montage sung over by my wife, Billie Eilish, of home video footage of women being mothers. Yes. And then she goes straight to the gynecologist. Yes. So she's having an existential crisis about the fact that she can't have children. So she's, she's living in a feminist utopia. And when she actually gets the choice, she goes and lives in the patriarchy yes. and becomes a mother. Yeah. And it's biologically essentialist as well, because what does she need to become a real woman? She needs to, uh, something that involves her going to the gynecologist. Yes. She needs the essential, transphobic. the essential plumbing. It's very transphobic. How dare you? Yeah. Especially considering they had a trans Barbie and the trans Barbie was the doctor. Right. Good point. Mm. Yeah, very interesting. But but anyway, during this montage, we see that they have a black female president mm. who is oppressing all of the Kens. Oh, yeah, the Kens are incredibly badly treated. In yeah, this. yeah, they're, they're the lumpen proletariat. So all, all, all the Kens, they're basically homeless and, and they just have to look good and they're, they're just there to sate the, the desires of, of the Barbies. They yeah. just, they're just there. To, I mean, they, they literally just live on the beach or on the streets. Yeah, to validate the Barbies without ever having any hope of intimacy because they're ultimately sterile. Yeah. And they're all aware that they don't have genitals, but they all desperately want them because they feel very embarrassed by it. And as soon as Ken goes to the real world, somebody like just says hi to him and asks yeah. him for the time and he can't believe that somebody's spoken to him and engaged to him as a human being. And the, yeah. and the important thing about that as well is that he's offering a woman the time. So that is, he is serving a functional purpose to a woman. Yes. He's not dominating her. Yes. He is needed for, for an earnest reason. Yes. And the fascinating thing is as well, and, and again, if you guys haven't seen this, we're just spoiling the whole film because I don't actually advise you go out and pay to see it, but it's still hilarious. So when it comes out in streaming, it's, it's probably well worth it. Yeah. Um, this, the spoilers, you will not believe what we're saying, but this is word for word exactly what happens. When they go to the real world, there is a montage where Ken looks at horses Various American presidents, men's faces on the dollar, <laughs> men high-fiving in sports teams, Sylvester Stallone in, in mink coats. Yeah. And he suddenly realizes that patriarchy is awesome. Now, it's not patriarchy in the way they think it's patriarchy. Because when he goes to talk to the soy jack that's So, so cars, that bit is going to get meme to hell, I'm sure. Oh, it's, there's going to be so many little dark age yeah. montages. and yeah. yeah. When he goes to talk to the guy, the guy says, oh, you need all these credentials. And the guy says, oh, we're, we're still doing patriarchy, we're just doing it more covertly. But they never actually provide any examples of it. Because when he goes to try and get a job, the female nurse just turns him away going, you aren't sufficiently qualified. But when he comes back and says, well, maybe men should be in charge of Barbie land. The Barbies, who are super educated, are suddenly somehow spellbound by, by the suggestion of patriarchy into a position of relative subordinacy, but they enjoy it. Well, that's the thing. So when, the, when, the, when they go back to, to the Barbie land and the yeah. Kens take over... In all of and, five yeah. minutes, by the yeah, way. Yeah, so it goes to show how brittle and fragile the, yeah. the feminist utopia was. But what, what do the Kens do? Well, they start, they start life bonding with the Barbies. Yeah. And, and they start providing useful functions. They start doing jobs. They start, you know, um, taking their, their Barbie to the beach and, mm. and playing guitar for her or watching a yeah. movie with her. Or, or, or bas they, they start basically pair bonding. They start falling in love. Yeah. And, and, and they start providing, you know, you know, value to their community. Yeah. And, and they stop competing with each other and stop hating each other all the time. Yes. Because then Simu Lu and Ryan Gosling's Kens become best bros. Yes. And then they go to war only because the Barbies deliberately oh, so discord. Cheat on them. By cheating on them. Yes. And there's a line where it says, and right when they think they're most powerful, you take it all away. And it's like, right, so you use sex and lies to turn men against yeah. each other to erect a matriarchy. Because especially the world the Kens created, they were doing, they, they were basically providing the, the, the 1950s role, weren't they? I mean, yes. they, they were doing all the work. Yep. 
and providing lifetime partnerships to the Barbies. And the Barbies were all perfectly content and happy with this yeah. until they literally grab a Barbie, throw in the back, throw of, a in the back of a van, and subject her to a brainwashing session. A feminist struggle consciousness raising session yeah. where they give the Barbie the contradictions of the real world for which yes. the Barbie should have absolutely no frame of reference yes. because if the patriarchy was really non-existent the matriarchy yes. was perfect in Barbie land, why would they have the contradictions of being a woman out in patriarchy? Yes, and then use that psych- psychological brainwashing to convince the Barbies to cheat on their Ken yeah. to, to make the Kens hate each other so that the whole thing collapses. Yeah, so that while while yeah. the election is happening, oh, yeah. the Kens are meant to be changing the constitution, the Kens are too busy infighting, so the Barbies just go in and flood the fortify. ballot box. They, yes. go and, they go and fortify yes. the election. Yes. Yeah. Against, against the wishes of the newly appointed Supreme Court and all of that. Yes. Which is... Madness. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, John. Okay. Um, yeah. So it's it's mental. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, just just unbelievable stuff. Um, so when that was also the other thing is when Barbie goes to the real world, she realizes she's created an entire generation of women who hate her. And even though all the other Barbies exist, where they've got all of these roles, she's still the most prominent one. And she's created a generation of insufferable teenagers who literally call her. Uh, uh, the embodiment of sexualized capitalism, rampant consumerism, and a fascist. Yeah. So feminism does not make women as happy as they think it does. And the whole reason that mother was screaming at Barbie towards the end, when Barbie was sitting there going, I'm no longer pretty, I'm useless, the Kens have taken over. She was complaining about all of the contradictions, how you're meant to be, you're meant to stand out, but not go against the sisterhood, how you're meant to work, but you also be a mum. And it's like, right. Yeah. But that's all problems of feminism. You don't lay at the feet of feminism, whereas all the Barbies until you tell them about the problems feminism created, are happy in Ken world. Yeah, so, so this is the thing. So the surface level analysis of this is the entire film is, is constructed to say yep. that the interests of men are incompatible with the interests of women and vice versa. Yes. And therefore, there can never be harmony between the two. Yeah. It has to be this conflicting struggle. So you start the movie with the Barbies on top completely yep. suppressing the men, even though when it flips the other way, the men basically just become husbands and providers. And, and both and the sexes are happy. Yeah, and both sexes are happy. Yeah, exactly. But the, the film, in, in that, so this is, so the first time I watched it, my, my, my impression was, okay, I don't want to take my girls to see this yeah. because it is, it is putting out this worldview that women and men cannot be happy at the same time yes. unless men are in charge, in which case men and women can be happy at the same time. So, or, um, yeah. yeah. And, but or, they, I'm not sure they would get that at sort of no, nine. Especially yeah. not with all the swearing in it as well. There's a needless amount of yeah. gratuitous yeah, like, gay jokes and, and, yes. yeah, and, and Just, yeah, outright swearing. Ma- yeah. rapping with, yeah, over, yeah. The, over the end. The, the interesting thing as well is that even the narrator recognizes the Kens need a civil rights movement when the matriarchy is reinstantiated. Because when the Kens petition for a petite on the position on the Supreme Court, the female president goes, maybe a lower appellate court will see. And the narrator chimes in and says, as you can see, there's still a long way to go until the Kens get the same amount of power that women have in the real world. Now, yes. I don't think they understand how that line sounds. But there are women on the Supreme Court. But th- that's exactly the point. Like, this country's had like three women, women prime ministers. At there's this point. currently three on the Supreme Court in the states, and so yeah. so this is why that line doesn't come off as I think they mean it sounds because it sounds like it's acknowledging that the Kens don't have anywhere near the level of influence that women do in our world, yes. in their world. So we need a Ken civil rights movement. Yes, that's how the film ends. Well, Kens in their world don't even have ha- homes. No, they're, they're all homeless. No, and and until. The Kens take over, yes. they take over the houses, and then in the real world, the reflection is the Ken houses sell better to boys and girls. So they're also more profitable, more beloved, and Barbie world is happier. Yes. What were they thinking? <laughs> they yes. thought this was bad. Yeah, this is... It's baffling. <laughs> like, the, the, this, this is going to be like one of those films like Starship Troopers. Yeah, exactly. Go and see Carl's old video on Starship Troopers if you don't understand. Because I, I watched Starship Troopers at the time and thought, oh, this is fantastic. Yeah. And it was only like 10 years later I read an article that explained that it was actually meant to be the opposite of what I thought it was. Well, Robert Heinlein wrote the book as the kind of libertarian sci-fi utopia. Then right. Paul Verhoeven didn't yeah. read the book but wanted to make the film as a parody of fascism. So he dressed up right. all of the libertarian utopia in the fascist uniforms. Right. So he gave it the paraphernalia, but none of the moral content. And then okay. he was like, well, obviously the humans are evil, and, but, but no, the bugs attacked first. They committed genocide. Yes. And the humans are just defending yeah, themselves. Yeah, I've, I've heard the book is different, but the, but the film was just like, but okay, that was the this, film. This, this is based plus cool uniforms. Yeah, but, but like the film is, the humans are under existential threat from the bugs. Yes. So it's an unprovoked attack and 
killed Rico's entire family. And so, yeah, he signs up. It's like, and, and they're bad? Yeah. Like, the same with Barbie. It's, it's like the, the Kens are a lobotomized surf class that uh, only exist as, as emotional validation cattle for the vapid Barbies who will never allow them to stay the night. And they also have no frame of reference for sex, yet make all these sex jokes. Bad writing. And then the moment the Kens ascend and show some competency, other than the one joke you put in there about building a wall vertically because you wanted to take a shot at Trump, the women are happier. Even the president is happier serving beers to her boyfriend on a beach. Things yes. are working better. In the real world, it's more profitable. And the only person that comes in and destroys it are one weird Barbie who got played with too hard, who wrote the film, by the way, and is a lesbian that gives Barbie the Birkenstocks, and actual Barbie, who's a vapid narcissist, who falls over and cries because her boyfriend dumps her because she didn't recognize him, and then said, the entire world must change around me, and still isn't yes. happy when Barbie society gets fixed the way she wants it. So then she abandons it, stops being Barbie, and goes and bees a mum. Yes, that's the thing, isn't it? So, so you, you've got this feminist utopia, and Ken sees the real world and starts to recognize that actually men have value. Yes. So he goes back, and he basically reconstructs society overnight. Yeah. Everybody's happier. Yes. Um, he, he actually does something. And then all the Kens, they start doing stuff, right? Yes. But, then, but then Barbie comes back, like you say, and she just collapses on the floor and basically bangs her fists up and down and says, somebody fix this for me. And then the other thing is, well, the Kens, despite calling it patriarchy, aren't dominating the women. No. All, they're just helping them. Like they pathologize it, saying, yeah. a woman comes and sits down next to a guy and says, I've never seen The Godfather. Can you explain it? He's so eager to share an experience with her. Or your yeah. analog cal- character in the 10 gallon hat giving her investment advice, you know? <laughs> it's like the Kens. But, also- but the point is that they are, they are very obviously happy. They are, the yeah. Barbies are glowing at this point. They're, they're, they're perfectly content. And they gave them the right to vote. It's not like they yeah. came in and took the government by force. They just convinced them to do this. And then they said, in two weeks' time, we'll vote. Vote. Not, not a fascist takeover. They gave them the option, and they had to. Yes. They, so, so, they had to stop the Kens from going to the polls to re-erect the. So, so, so they actually achieved a, 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 a democracy. Yes. An equal democracy, and then with the, gender the, complementarity. Yes, and then the feminists arrived and immediately instituted a fascist takeover. Yes, and then didn't allow the Kens. By to represent the election. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, and then and then the ending. In fact, they used they used sluttery. Yeah. to distract the Kens long enough to go and fortify the election. And their beta male orbiter as well, because remember Alan? There's yes. only one of him, and he's the enabler. Yeah. And then at the end, he's crying because he sees Ken crying, because actually he just wanted to sleep with Ken the whole time. I must have phased out by that point. Yeah, I don't blame you. But then, but then the ending for Ken, and this is the subversive part of the film, yeah. is that men and women have to exist apart. Either men are subordinate to women and really emotional, or Ken can go off and find himself without Barbie. Now, that is, that is obviously meant to be, well, men need feminism, and men need to come back and realize that patriarchy is wrong, and then they might be worthy of acceptance. Right. And sometimes a woman might not just choose you, and it's okay. No, no, no. Ken had a lucky break, my friend, because that was the worst Barbie out of the lot. She's gone. She's gone off to the real world. Yeah. He understands how the government and how society should work, so he deserves a better girl. Ken is yeah. our guy. And he had the best musical number in the whole thing. Easily. Like, have you not, I don't know if you've seen the edit yet, but there is currently an edit of Patrick Bateman walking into the office with, you know, walk, uh, walking on sunshine, yeah. playing his But instead, it's the I am Ken and, and I'm enough song. It's just, it's gold. Like, they, they don't know what film they made. Not, not even the slightest. Yeah, because it is, I mean, they have unintentionally created an advert for patriarchy. Yes, they've, they've created, and, and so I saw someone make this as a, as a meme, but I wanted to explain this concept. Are you familiar with what the longhouse is? I think I am, actually. So for those yeah. who aren't, it comes from, it's an analogy that comes from a uh, gay Romanian Anon author called Bronze Age Pervert. And his analogy imbibes some like, proto-feminist anthropology. The longhouse didn't really exist, but he's taken uh. a feminist idea that there were Nordic longhouses where men and women were sat on the floor and dictated to like infants from the yeah. den mother. And he said, this is all of civilization where your behavior is controlled. There's no room for violence and you have to constantly comply. Otherwise you don't get fed. And so, so for those listening, we're, we're displaying a picture of literally a long Nordic house. So it's, it's yes. sort of large, sort of great hall, but it's very long, yes. obviously, therefore the name longhouse. My understanding is, is, is that basically everybody lived in it. It was, it was not divided into rooms. No. So it was all open. So we, it was subject to... Um, constant oversight, surveillance, and monitoring, yes. which led to a society which became organized along basically um, feminine values. Yeah, the smothering Bec- mother. S- smothering mother, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so, so it was essentially an attempt to snuff out all male vital energy. Yes. 
how is that not Barbie land? Yes, that is. And so Barbie yes. unintentionally gave us the tragedy of coming so close to the fall of the longhouse yes. with gender parity for complementarity and well-being yes. while also being somewhat still free. Yes. And sex and lies ruined it. So so this is this, I mean this is the, the sort of the tragedy of the Barbie itself because of course only one Barbie has actually ever seen anything outside of it. Yeah. So so she I mean she she just accepts the world that she's in at the beginning. Then she sees the yep. real world. Then she goes back and discovers that actually now all the Barbies and Kens are pair bonding and and there's there's now gender equality. Yeah. She hates it because she's sort of programmed to hate it and that weird um psycho in the hills, the, the weird, weird Barbie. Barbie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She 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 says, Okay, well, we need to brainwash people until we get we get back to our sort of fascist state before. Yeah. And as soon as Barbie achieves it, she realizes, Oh, what have I done? Get me out of here yeah. and and goes to live in a world run by men again. Yes. That's, yeah. 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 Well, the, the, at one point they literally say, you're either weird or you're ugly. There's no in between. And it's like, right, so you're either a miserable matriarchal lesbian that oppresses men. Yes. Or, or uh, sorry, no, you're brainwashed or you're ugly. That was it. So, yeah. or, or you're brainwashed by the patriarchy and, and what, happy with a husband? Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. I know which one I prefer. So, I totally get what you're saying. I don't think anyone should take their young daughters to see this no. because because the bits we're discussing like because because you got the you, you got the bit right at the end which basically shows um you know what I what I just said which is she wants to get out of this yes. and you get the unintentional deconstruction of feminism and and it sh- is an advert for patriarchy yeah but the the main part of the movie the biggest part of the movie and the most simplistic messaging the bit that children would pick up on is that women and men cannot live together yeah. unless one of them is in charge and dominating the other one yes so for God's sakes, don't take children to no. see this. No, who? This is this is the weird thing. Who is it marketed for? Because it's obviously marketed at weird Arrested Development adults yes. and feminists. But the whole marketing campaign was very kid friendly. Yes. So, yeah, this is not a kids movie, is no, it? No, it's not even it's just remotely. Not. I mean, they they say mother what rating they, is it? They say mother effort in it, don't they? It's, yes. It's twelve A, so you can take kids to it, but it's obviously right. not made for kids. Yes. It's made for Greta Gerwig and the weird lesbian woman Kate McKinnon who plays weird. Well, as you're pointing out, it's it's actually made. For Republicans because they're the ones going to see it and they're it's finding it hilarious. Yes, it's it's literally like Ryan Gosling's our guy. It yeah. is the it is the tragic fall of a hero who almost ended the reign of Longhouse, and so yes, it is I'll, a tragedy, isn't it? I'll wrap this segment up by basically saying it's it's akin to American Psycho or Starship Troopers. Um, don't let let the left have this gloat because it's our film. Enjoy. Thank you for watching that segment from the podcast of the Lotus Eaters. If you enjoyed, why not visit our website? where you can get our podcast live at one o'clock on weekdays in full, uncensored, and for free, as well as paying us as little as £5 a month to get access to all of our premium content. For example, mine and Harry's series Comics Corner, where in this episode, we go through the history of the superhero comics industry from the platinum, golden, and silver ages. That's the 1930s right through to the 50s. Keep an eye out for part two. And if you'd like to see what all of the team are putting out, you can follow me on Twitter at con underscore Tomlinson and the rest of the team at lotuseaters underscore com on Twitter. Till next time, goodbye.